and I'm going to hand over to Maddie, who is our speaker for Black History Month, our first speaker, talking about identifying your own brand, who is also a podcast speaker <laughs> and advocate for the WFDA. Okay, over to you, Maddie. Thank you so much. So let me just share my screen with you beautiful people first. There we go. Can everyone see that screen okay? Okay, so I've met, uh, met you all many, many people before. So this, so you know who I am, I'm Maddie. And um, so we're going to talk about identifying your own brand. <clears throat> so I've just got a, question, a couple of questions. Now, these questions don't need to be answered right now. These are kind of questions in the back of your mind I want you to keep there. It's basically, I want you just to think about them and it's something that you can reflect on now or later you know a question to us like who you are just you to think like who you are and what do you and what do you want the world to see so when we're going through this um, presentation you understand the reason of those two questions of who you are and what you want the world to see okay so first we're going to talk about what is identity so when we're talking about brands, the first one we talk about is product brands, service brands, things like that. But first, they're separate as well as you must be aware to identity of people. So what's identity? Start with that first. First question. <clears throat> identity is basically understanding the difference from a personality. And uh, uh, as you can see, um, Identity is that everyone's different. We're all different. So it's about individual when I'm talking about identity, about the person um, is what I'm saying about identity. Okay. Then. What is a brand? So a brand. A brand is a name given to a product or service where they um, take on the identity identity by themselves so why do I say this as we all do had my introduction is that I would like to become a um, I do a podcast and I want to be a motivational speaker so with that it's trying to grow a brand so people see me as that person see me as a very inspiring speaker and that that is separate to my identity or the person who I am that other people see there's that kind of makes sense on where I'm going. Now, I'm going to talk about the Queen. Sorry for her loss, but the Queen is the biggest brand in the world. We all know about the Queen, don't we? What she did for the country, um, what she represents for us, for the British nation, things like that. But do you know the Queen's identity? Can anyone just answer? Or anyone? No? She's okay, so the Queen. Long line I think Sadia has blood. got her. Sadia, have you got your hand Sorry. Up? Yeah, I can't see because of my screen. I'm really sorry. Um, no, I was just almost about to say something. Sorry, Catherine. Um, when you say identity, do you mean brand or are you just talking about identity? Well, that's the thing. There's two parts, isn't there? So you've got a brand, the brand and identity are two separate things, aren't they? So identity is who she actually is? Mm -hmm. As a person. Yes. To the brand that we know her as. Do you understand? Yes. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. So like... You know, like we, you know, she was a very iconic lady, you know, as I said, she's a known across the world. People knew who she was in a, as a brand. You know, people would come to England, to be honest, to go to to see, go to London, don't they, to see uh, the palace or anything around the Queen as a brand, didn't they? But did you, uh, we didn't really know her as an individual, as a, an individual, as a person, apart from her family and her close family and friends. Really, we don't know much about her detail of her personal life, of what she did in the background. Person, we knew a little bit, like she like 
corky dogs. She liked horse riding and that's a place. And she went shooting. She lived up in Scotland for many long time in the castle. Uh, but not much more about her, though. Did we really know about the Queen? Did no, we? As there was no. an identity. I mean, I'm just reading in the comments. Linda said the Queen identity was not known as she never really revealed her true self. Mm -hmm. See? Um, and I think that's also because of her choice as well. She mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. by choice, a slightly closed person. And I think it was that though as well. She was, um, her, to be honest, she was born for the job, wasn't she? You know, the queen was, you know, she, she was going to be the next in throne after her thing. So I think that was a separate thing they did. It's purposely as well, isn't it? For the job. Pardon? I don't think she was born for the job. It's no. To abdicate for her to actually be in line. Mm hmm No, that's good. Yeah. But then her identity played into her brand. Mm -hmm. Her brand was also the queen, the mystery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. You know. So which um, should we see? Which do you think we saw? The brand or the identity? Which do we see more of? Um, Be Becky, you, you, you need to unmute if you're speaking. Linda's just said she saw the brand. Sorry, Becky. Sorry. I think um, Becky's got a problem with her, <laughs> her headset at the moment. No, Becky. Yes, Becky, your, your microphone isn't working for some reason. Yeah, I've got, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so I've unplugged and I'm now just yelling at the laptop. <laughs> I've, got, I've got an indoor house rabbit and the through my wire, so I'm using a different headset and I'm guessing it's not working right. <laughs> Um, I, was, I was just saying that um, I think part of why she was quite guarded is because of uh, when we've been down is because of her age. She was that sort of like generation, like wartime, like me nan, and it was all that stiff up her lip and mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't use anybody's first name and that sort of thing. So I think that's possibly why she was a bit more like reserved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. That is what I definitely feel about about her when um when looking into her and doing some research around her around kind of like who she really was it was quite hard to find who that person who she was um but she was still a wonderful woman as um andy said she was a wonderful woman a great role model um to her family to her grandchildren and to many um women of today at the same time so another icon that if we can I um as well have a look is Obama. Okay. <laughs> so with him it's a different cat, it's a different kind of thing because his um brand and identity are two that are you can't you can recognize you know um he showed you who he is to his brand as well because like on his campaign to become president he did a lot of his campaign via social media do you know what I mean so they got to know him they got to know his family as well you know what I mean they got to know his background things like that um so you kind of a bit more knowing as I feel identity Obama to his brand what does other people think about that I think as a politician, you've got to, if you're going to be successful, you've got to show yourself, whereas the Queen was absolutely essential. She didn't show herself in, mm -hmm. in, in order to maintain that mystique of the crown and mm -hmm. the power of the crown, whereas Obama's power was much more about connecting with people and sharing the power mm -hmm. and reaching people. Definitely. I think that's definitely one. And he was like, the, you know... 44th president of America, and he was a black African American too. And that's like, you know, when I was, for me, it's amazing because it's just like you can do anything. That's one thing I remember when he got in, I said, you can do anything. He did that, you can do anything. So it gave me that empowerment as well. He showed that you can do that, give people empowerment. So, Linda, yeah. um, you're next. 
Yeah, I, I just wanted to say, can you hear me? Yeah. Not now. <laughs> no. Okay. okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I just wanted to say, I think the other thing that Obama, by sharing himself in the way that he did, he was still very controlled. He didn't mm. share all of him. Mm. He shared what needed to be shared. He was able to bring about a consensus within the American society that change was necessary. So, and he wasn't able to convince everyone because we got the Trump backlash, but he was <laughs> able, he was able <coughs> through that openness to talk about and live uh, mm. a society that was open to change. And so he created a consensus within that society that enabled substantial change and not only in the States, but in Europe too, because when he was elected, we started to have other mm. um, areas of our world, opening up gay marriage, mm -hmm. those sorts of things, being seen as not outrageous, but totally acceptable and, and a human right. So I think history will paint this, I'm a great fan, this, this Obama, I think, will go down in history as somebody who got that balance right. I think it's a rare, rare commodity. I think it's it's it, no one else has really managed to do it without going to an extreme. Mm. So, so his brand is going to leave a legacy, isn't it? Basically, he's he, left he a legacy, a wonderful, definitely. Yeah, a wonderful legacy. But I, I do think that um, social media has developed in ways because he was kind of like using it for the first time. Mm. So how people develop their brands and how they maintain their identity is something that wasn't really thought about that much. But because mm -hmm. he's supremely clever he mm -hmm. was able to do that juggle and they have successfully remained intact others fall along the wayside so you know and you know trolling was in its infancy so you know it, he's over time if that makes sense mm. there's, there's an interesting comment here uh, <coughs> in the chat from becky morris uh, and it's it's really about how brands are constructed uh, because Becky's talking about the fact that the Queen is constructed by tradition, mm -hmm. whereas Obama, in a sense, you know, being a politician, he's constructed by the political drive he had and the values that linked to that. Mm -hmm. So is, are we saying that brands are a construction of processes and, and values, whereas identity is much more fluid? What are we saying here? You know, I want to put that out there. So that's what I want to hear from other people, what they think around that. <clears throat> I mean, I agree. I think brands are definitely more constructed. It's an image, isn't it? What you want to mm. put out there, what you want people to think, as opposed to who you actually are behind this image. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I think Obama chose what he he became whereas the queen would have had it chosen for her she would have had probably almost no say in the first instance anyway yeah whether but, she became but what queen are the or values what are the values that obama had as you know compared to the queen i think that's an interesting yeah conversation to have <clears throat> it gets very political <laughs> yeah i mean they were both about change i mean the queen was very good at moving with the times mm -hmm. she embraced um well she was forced to embrace a lot of changes um she um sorry my mind's gone blank <laughs> No, that's no, it's great input yeah. because I think she has done, isn't it? Within her family, you know, there was a couple of chains, but the number one in her family, like her grandson married the big hoo ha about um, when Harry married, met, married Meghan. I think the Queen was actually supportive with them. She wasn't thing, but we were told a different image, what the media told us as well. Well, I think around that. That's always a problem, though, isn't it? Because some some of those, you know, ugly image. I think yep. sometimes um, it, they've got an image, and then the media try and corrupt the image, don't they? That's the thing. Because the mm -hmm. media, the media, sometimes they either love you or they hate you. If they hate you, they try and change the image. You're trying to portray one image, and the media then corrupts you and changes it to a different image. So I think that that's that's that sometimes can be a problem with with image. It's portrayed, isn't it? Sometimes. Yeah, definitely. 
I mean, that's the power of the media, isn't it? I mean, they can they can destroy someone as they did Jeremy Corbyn, for example. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Becky's Sorry. got a hand out as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hi, everybody. I'm really glad that I am part of this because I'm really enjoying myself. This is cracking, absolutely cracking. And I was just thinking about, um, so I hold my hands up. I've been watching The Crown. Um, <laughs> Queen passed away, God bless her. And I've never been, I've been sort of either either in regards to the, the monarchy. And one thing that I kept getting in my head was that when she was queen in the 1950s, um, my mum was born in 1951. And when you were a woman in the 1950s, being very generalistic, very broad, that it was often about staying at home, cooking meals, all that kind of stuff. But in magazines like Good Housekeeping, there's also suggestions, you know, why why can't you get a job? Things like that in terms of not necessarily playing what we often see within uh, sort of advertising, things like that. Um, so in terms of the Queen, she always maybe have had a bit of a struggle back in 1952 of being taken seriously. Um, and in terms of her identity, that would be what that is but in terms of her brand as she got older she became more the legacy was there she was cheeky she sort of moved the crown jewels like this um, which was hilarious but also with Barack Obama it was about social change and social message um, and this is where we are with Meghan Markle as well about the social change and the social message in respect to what the Queen's legacy is in respect to that. So there's kind of some connections, but there's also disparities as well, because I'm a huge fan of Barack and Michelle Obama. They're my role models. I think they're wonderful. No, they definitely are. Thank you so much for that input. I think that's amazing. So guys, this is about you guys now. Okay, so we're going to go to some breakout rooms in a moment. But before we go into the rooms, let me just talk about why, um, why we're going into the room. So I asked you two questions at the beginning, didn't I? When we first started this off. Um, you know, basically, who are you? So that's your identity. Who, you, who are you? And what do you want the world to see? So the way that I look at that is like, we have my identity. Our identities are different to the brand that we have that we show the world at the same time and sometimes our identity is different with different people aren't we at the thing so my identity here is probably different to my identity to when I go to work to my customers what they see as well we're all completely different so then the next so there are the two questions I asked you. this question is what's your brand individually you you know your brand so directly you that could be Becky, that can be Andy, it can be anyone in the group. So we're going to put you into like four different things. And then um, if you want to feedback, you can do. But I want you to kind of, in your group, talk about your brand. You know, what's your values? What's your brand say about you? Okay. So a lot of people, I can see a lot of faces thinking as well. Right? Huh? Yeah. Yep. Thanks. That's great. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, let me put it. Um, I see a lot of people's faces thinking. How do you feel about that? I'm just remembering something the other day, Maddie, that's mm -hmm. in a business seminar, which is your brand is your whole person and your whole business. It's the combination of the two. That's how I sort of think of it in work terms. It's it's both. Mm -hmm. I, I don't really see them as separate, but I know I know they traditionally are separate. But these days, they seem to be going on a, quite a lot about your identity being part of your brand. Mm -hmm. And that's so I'm trying to think of them as two separate things. And it's quite I'm struggling with that. But yeah, I'll, I'll have a go. I'll have a go and see if I can separate them. But I I mostly think of brand as the whole the whole of a person. Mm -hmm. whether it's at work or socially okay um, mm -hmm. 
Well, yeah, it's good. That's it's the thing. Question. Do people want to just discuss it as, a, as in the gallery or do you want to go to breakout rooms? What would you prefer? Gallery. That's only my feeling. <laughs> what does that I've got no preference. I don't mind. Don't breakout mind really. rooms, please. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever. Uh, um, like Doreen, right. Doreen, you put your thumbs down. Is that because you don't want to go into the <laughs> room? Yeah, I don't want to go in the breakout room. You don't want to. Maybe you should tell us what we're going to do rather than ask us. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think actually breakout rooms would be a bit more intimate and um, okay. and less and, and less potentially challenges quite a lot of us and yeah and those are people who don't say a lot uh, an opportunity to to contribute because i gab too much so <laughs> me too in a breakout room, i do so what we're going to do then is we're going to yeah. have four rooms yeah um which means about three people in each room am i right uh one two three four no, four people in each room. I'm, I'm going to assign it manually and um, I'm going to try and put an advocate in each room as well. So if necessary, the advocate can feed back um, because we'll have a feedback session afterwards. Um, and we're going to be, um, you're going to be in those rooms for eight minutes, if that's okay. I, I'm going to be waiting here for you. If anybody wants to leave the room, that's absolutely fine because I'll be here mm. outside the rooms and you can chat to me. Okay. So I think um, this was a great, I just want to give people opportunities that um, I know it's a bit of always talking talk in the gallery. So that's why I thought breakout room is nice. It's smaller and you can all have your kind yeah. of say whatever you want to say. And there's no like for some people if they don't want to say it out in the gallery room neither. I just want you to have your opportunity to have your voice, you know to say who your brand who you are and i think that's really important have we got two choices here <laughs> oh well yes we have joyce it. dutch have i got joyce. two choices yes you have joyce dutch <laughs> okay <laughs> all right then i'm gonna do these breakout rooms can you i hope you don't mind um if i if you take my, if I just let me just take my time over this. Um, right. So. You apologize. I just put down what the question was and realized I missed an AIN brand. Um, I think people understand with dyslexia that sometimes you miss letters out. <laughs> That's my brand. That's part of me. <laughs> I, I tell you what, with me, it's like. I'm, <laughs> stuff and some of it they say what did you read then I said I can't mention it <laughs> okay I've assigned four rooms um two rooms have got four people two rooms have got three people in each room there is an advocate I think I'm right yes I have done it right yep so what I'm going to do now if everybody's all right with this I'm going to open the rooms up um and you have um, eight minutes, but I want to, gosh, oh, here we are. Um, I'm, I've got a new Mac and I'm um, <laughs> still. I'm so good. I bought into new new ideas, didn't I, guys? So sorry. <laughs> I thought they'd be really right, good. So I've just done it. Eight minutes, okay? Um, yeah. Sorry about this. And you will get um, a message just before, uh, about a minute before, okay, saying that we'll come back into the gallery. So I'm going to open up the rooms now, everybody. Um,
Well, that was exciting. Um, Maddie, you probably need to put your microphone on. I'm saying welcome back to the room, everyone. How's that experience? Forgetting I'm on mute. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much. I'm so happy you all took part of that. I think that was a bit different to um, the thing as well. Um, let me sign some people back in. Let me just tell you, Maddie, that yeah. um, in, in room one, you mm -hmm. had Becky as advocate, mm -hmm. room two, M, room three, Linda, mm -hmm. room four, Sa Sadia and Rose, okay? Beautiful. So you had an advocate in every room if you want them to feed back to you. Yes, let's let's um let's pick a random number two. Who is in room two? Uh, oh <laughs> I think that's me. Was that me? I think so. Yes, yeah, then you in, you, then you're in room three with me. You're not next. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hello everyone, Em's lovely to be here. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, so uh, I was in room two mm -hmm. along with Doreen and Joyce. Mm -hmm. um, so overall, Doreen and Joyce, please do interject um, uh, if you, there is something that you'd like to say. But overall, we, quite, I, quite, we, I, I think it, is it okay to say we? Yeah. Uh, found it quite a difficult conversation, Maddie. Okay. We sort of get to the identity mm. in the brand. And there was a couple mm. of us that wasn't even sure that we wanted a brand per se. Uh, okay, uh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Mm. And then our sort of identity, I'll just speak for myself. I, I, I think this will stay with me for a while. This will, this is a big question for me, mm -hmm. like what my identity is, because, you know, I could come up with like working class, middle-aged white woman, you know, and mm -hmm. it, I think this question is going to really take some, some time for me to consider um so and as a group we kind of felt a little bit like that and then we did talk about how sometimes our, our identity changes it might alter from one day to the next mm -hmm. something about like our sense of self mm -hmm. how we feel about ourselves but not necessarily identity our mm -hmm. identity yeah okay it. so i mean we could have talked for a lot lot longer it was really lovely to come together in a small group and kind of really have that conversation. So I'm glad we went into breakout rooms. But uh, Joyce, Corinne, I don't know if you would like to add anything, but that would be my feedback from our time together. Beautiful. Thank you, guys. Beautiful. I think it's a really interesting feedback, actually, um, that you're saying that, there's, you know, it, it's quite a complex issue, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm. You know, uh, when we talk about our identity, then we talk about a brand, because as we said earlier, we, we all really agree that a brand is a constructed thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I, identities are much more complex than that. They're yeah. fluid, aren't they? Yeah. And I think that's what you're saying, isn't it, Em? Yes, yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, Joyce, I would just like to add, because yeah. I... I mean, well, as you know, I find it quite difficult to do like kind of comprehensive things. So I just did a poem that I did uh, about what's it like to be black. And that was kind of about sense of self and identity and how like sometimes mm -hmm. people want to put us in a box. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the others were saying, and because we we're saying we're kind of finding it quite difficult to uh, express ourselves and like self-expression and identity and branding and like, no, no, I don't want to be brand. I don't want to be labeled neurodivergent or, or this is what I'm a person. Do you know what I mean? I have an identity, I have a sense of self and how all these different things that sometimes we get labelled with mm -hmm. are not necessarily our sense of self, they're other people's assumptions about us. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I'm still me, whoever I am, I'm, I'm black, white, blue, mm -hmm. neurodivergent or whatever, I'm a human being mm -hmm. and I have feelings and emotions, I am me. Yeah. Alright, sorry. <laughs> no, that's brilliant. That's fantastic. No, thank you so much. I thought you were just about to launch into a poem, Joy. <coughs> I did, but maybe you want to hear it later. Let everybody else do their feedback. Oh, if you want to talk, say it now. Why yeah, not? do it. Right. Go. Oh, God, go, go. I don't want anyone to be offended by it, okay? All right. This is a safe place. I know, I know. Okay. Remember, I'm just coming back. Okay. What's it like to be black, constantly under attack, fighting yet having to hold back? 
what's it like to be brown and browning through heritage, not chemically bleaching one's skin? What's it like to be judged by the color of your skin by those who don't know you or your kin? What's it like to be judged by your race when your race alone dictates your fate, your destiny, your opportunity? What's it like to be judged yet never known? What's it like for the place of your birth here in the UK where you were born, raised, educated, or was it indoctrinated? For others still not to acknowledge that this is our home, Black British, Caribbean of African origin. To never be accepted for who you are as a person, as a human being, who is expressive, isn't afraid to show their emotion, their feelings, the thing outside the boxes you need us to tick, the labels you need us to wear. What is it like to be black, to be beautiful from within, to have that shiny glow on your ebony, golden, brown, black skin? How innovative, diverse, creative, imaginary, intellectual, educational teachers and exceptional we can be as a people. What's it like to be black, to be me, to be you, to be them? What's it like to be black, to have that spirit, that energy, that soul? Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. That was brilliant, <laughs> Joyce. Fantastic. Yes. Amazing. Absolutely fantastic. You're a queen. Yeah, Will you share brilliant. that, Joyce? Will you share that with us? Can you send it to me? So I know we're recording, but do you have the words? Would you share that in an email to me so I can send it with the recording? Yeah, I can do that. I can do that. I just didn't want it to offend anybody because that was Nick's intention. Oh, well, I, I don't find that offensive. I think white people feel the same, you know, being yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you. <laughs> always, always being put in boxes, generalized about um for different reasons, for different reasons, the same feelings. Definitely, it's for different true. reasons. Okay, so okay. let's go with room number one. Who's in room one? Uh, that that was us. I was as if like that made a difference. But yeah, that uh, Becky. Oh, Becky, uh, Dee and Andrew was in our room. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a really good discussion. Um, I would say, and Andrew, Andrew, uh, if you want to chip in, feel free. But I think Becky helped us really sum it up with regards to we were, we were all sort of struggling. At, I found where we were, talk, we, were, we, were, we were talking, but not necessarily saying exactly what is our identity. If that makes sense, we, there was a lot of talking, but it was really difficult to define. And then. Mm. Sort of narrowed it down, like Becky was saying, like a lot of it is about our, our, our like personality more, identity, like we're passionate, we're driven, mm -hmm. you know, we, we focus, and it comes out when we're talking. Mm -hmm. That would be how I, I, I summarize our identity is more beautiful. In the core, you know what I'm saying? You know, mm. like, you know, your personality is the identity. I don't know if that helps or if anybody else wants to, to, to chip in it or if I've missed anything. I think you, you you hit it beautifully there, Bex. Um, oh, it's about sort of that constructive support. It's about empathy um, towards other people um, because we've got relatory experiences. Even though they may be different, there's relatory factors there. And also about um, being sort of, if you're happy to be in a, like uh, Andrew was talking about, sorry, Andrew, if you please feed in. I was just thinking about your fabulous glasses. Yeah, so kind of when I've got my glasses on, I can read like four times quicker. Um, so you can see me now. And also, you know, I I always have them on with that when I'm um, with students and even walking around. Like so, when I've been to the office, people are like, mm -hmm. I don't care, and it's part of me. And you know, the visual stress thing, and kind of having like Leo with me when I first went into the office, like, oh yeah, it's lovely, bloody bloody blah. blah, blah. But, you know, I feel also, you know, we were talking really about how, who we are, and I'm very much um, about, you know, the empowerment. Um, and, you know, and I feel it's fundamental to have positive disability role models. Um, and yeah, just kind of feeling, you know, a sense of pride and focus very much on the strengths model. I, I, mm. I, you know, I tend to steer away from sort of negativity and I've, I've read, you know, for my MA, so, so far eight papers um, and counting, um, you know, looking at the positive aspects of someone's conditions and also being able to put yourself in someone else's shoes. Um, and, you know, whatever research papers say, people who are neurodivergent are actually very good at doing it. So I'm going to shut up before I say anything offensive. <laughs> <laughs> The thing is, Andrew, you know, you wear, you, you're wearing those dark glasses and they're for a very practical reason. But actually, 
if you started looking at your visual brand that is super cool isn't it yeah because you know if you start looking at uh, films like the blues brothers in the 80s um you know which was a fantastic uh, mm. film wasn't it uh Ackroyd and Belushio and, and they wore dark glasses because they were you know super well it must be because I'm, I was yeah, born cool. in yeah, I was I was born in '83, so it'll be my birthday night next Tuesday. But kind of that whole thing about you know trying, you know, these are um, I've got multiple pets, so these these are designer ones. So, but it's the kind of trying to make the, the same about being cool with a disability. There's various things that I've read, and it's you know it's different, and you know it's good to be different. Mm. And I, actually, I don't know whether you knew Mary Colley, um, Catherine or not, but she was very much about promoting that kind of approach as well. So she used to run uh, the Developmental Adult Neurodiversity Association. And fortunately, she passed away um, 12 years ago, but she was very much uh, an advocate of her time. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. So, um, then... Did I do four and I've done one? Have I done four? Room four? Room four's no, next. One, one and two, I think. One and so two. I'm on room four. Sorry, short memory loss. Sorry, people. <laughs> There's room three with Linda. Yeah, I'm doing that. I'm, I'm doing it purposely at random numbers. So four okay. and then three. Sadia, <laughs> Sadia, do you want to do? Yeah, yeah. So that was myself, Rose, and Tarek. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, we similar to what M was saying actually, we were struggling a little bit and we were like asking lots of questions, you know, is a brand something that we construct or is it based on how people perceive us? Mm -hmm. So we were sort of um, considering that and mm -hmm. um, and then we um, Rose suggested maybe just coming up with three um, uh, you know characteristics that we would use to describe ourselves um and i talked about characteristics or traits that other people have um often associated with with me and um i also questioned whether it was quite egocentric because it was all kind of like these positive things that people have said and where I'm sure there's kind of negative things as well but then again with a brand it's all about the positive isn't it it's, you just put mm. out what's positive because you want people to be attracted to it um and then I also said that I don't think I want a brand you know I yeah, yeah I don't think I want a brand I just want to be um well we just wanted to be authentic you know I, I'd want my authentic mm -hmm. brand as much as possible um with, you know sincerity and connected you know the, the real the human element gets lost when it's all yes. about a brand mm -hmm. there was no right or right answer with this that's what I mean it was open for everyone to have the discussion about what you think yeah. and I think that's great you know that's great it's a different way of coming at it and I think that's amazing because you're making me think at the same time so I'm loving this it's really good um, so, so my group, um, I'm going to hand it over to my wonderful ladies because, you know, I didn't talk. <laughs> Hi, sorry about that. Um, uh, coming from a social work background and Lewis coming from a teaching background, we both I've identified... I've inverted them, don't be angry, don't drop them all over the floor. Sorry, is anybody hearing me? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's a risk. Yeah, sorry. Time, but, yeah. Lo Lois mm -hmm. was coming from a, a teaching background. Yeah. We both identified that we, to some extent, put our brand front of house. And what I mean by that is that there are parts of us that we hide, that we don't choose to share with other people. And there are parts that we use in order to survive, to manage day to day. So we talked about working with small groups of young people, meeting their needs. So we would need to show empathy, caring, we would need to be reliable and consistent. We'd need to be honest. We would have to show integrity and actually show integrity, not mm -hmm. to say we, we have it, but actually show it. But the other half of us, our identity, to some extent, we, we might not bring into the mix because it might confuse things. And, might over, and, and it's not about us, it's about the people that we're working with. So it's, to some extent, we recognize that our professions gave us 
a brand, it gave us an image that we needed to project. And to some extent, it also protected our identity. I don't know if Lewis agrees with me because she was going to say something. (laughs) And I I was really struggling with it as we were talking. I didn't get to say this because time ran out. But there was a point where um, when my children were primary school age, I was working in a primary PRU. So I was working with young children with with behaviour difficulties. And I actually decided to stop doing that because I got really confused. So this is where my identity and got a bit muddled mm-hmm. because I I became confused about what was actually acceptable behaviour mm. my own children because I was so used to dealing with, you know, yeah. <laughs> some terrible behaviour. And my daughter, I mean, she's absolutely wonderful now, but she was quite a challenging child at that age and I just got very confused about um, mm. how, how so, I, so I found that actually quite useful because I was really struggling with the difference between identity and brand but I could see there that I created a brand to be a teacher which is the sorts of things you was just mentioned Linda but at, at one point my I got confused between my, brand and my identity and I, I did actually stop doing it I did actually leave the PRU because I yeah. just being a good parent yeah (laughs) I think that fits very much in with people sort of saying that our sense of self and our identity changes over time Mm -hmm. and so we adapt and we change the brand to meet the new set of circumstances that we're in Mm -hmm. but essentially we display ourselves front of house to the world whether whether we're knowingly do it or not we don't want people to think of us as dyslexic unreliable can't mm-hmm. spell can't do this can't do that can't do that we, we want them to see us as dependable reliable but i i straddled my identity and brand with dyslexia you know, so it, it kind of mm-hmm. is it my superpower or is it the, the drain that holds me back <laughs> a whole nother story <clears throat> um but I do think that um, one of the things that I was very blessed with, in a way, is when I started my social work training, these are the questions that were asked at that point. And so it's 40 years ago, I was required to settle that argument for myself. So I don't necessarily feel uncomfortable with it, um, but I certainly, when, when Lois talks about how you deal with that, you know, working in a residential unit with young people who have challenging behaviour and then going home and caring for your own children, it's, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, And to some extent, you need that brand to, as a shield to protect you. And I do think sometimes when our politicians, Chief Whips just resigned, by the way, uh, stand in front of us. (laughs) Stand in front of us, they are also protecting a brand, aren't they? They, you know, their true selves are extremely or try to be hidden. Um, yeah, I think they've forgotten what their brand is, Linda. Sorry, they've lost <laughs> it's another story, isn't it? Really, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, my phone just lit up, and um, yeah, a lot of my um, friends are saying, Get ready, get ready, we're going for it, but we'll see, we'll see. Anyway, so yeah, sorry to dash it's back okay. Like that. I just can't believe I've just seen it. Um, but that's that that for me is 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 really what it's about more it's it's about being front of house and and mm-hmm. i think protecting i used it to protect myself mm-hmm. yeah thank no, you so through our, through our discussion i became a lot clearer i, I was used at the beginning of the discussion but it, yeah the discussion really helped me to think about that yeah. fantastic thank you good um d's got a hand up is that correct yeah thanks maddie um, I thought what Linda and Lois were saying was was really interesting, mm-hmm. and I think um, some people have said, "Oh, I don't, I don't think I even want a brand." And I thought, "Oh, that sounds really interesting as well." Um, and I remember from just because uh, I think I was like, "Oh, I don't really know what my brand is," but I think you know, me as a person, I think, well, I, I'm a black female and that's as much as I can really come up with. Mm-hmm. And me as a brand, 
maybe dyslexic events organizer and that's as much as I can come up with but I can remember doing a business course many years ago and I think this is where I got that from and they said oh you you are your brand so remember kind of you know when you go out you're representing yourself so you have to show yourself in the light that you want people to you know see you as and respect you as a, as a business person and all that um, so I, I think I always kind of put brand with, you know, kind of business and and kind of corporate things, but also but when what Linda and Lois were saying about how they had to be a brand, you know, to stand in front of the young people who they were teaching or, you know, um, so helping with their social situations and everything. Um, maybe that's why as well, some people maybe don't feel comfortable saying, oh, I, you know, my brand is this because maybe it's more of a kind of a corporate type thing mm. um, in a way as well. Um, yeah, that's my thoughts on it. No, thank you very much for sharing. Yeah, there's <coughs> comments in the chat. Yeah. Maddie, there's something from Doreen, if Doreen wants to talk about this. It's about, she says that brands are perhaps a bit like economies. Mm -hmm. Doreen, did you want to say something about that? No, that's okay, Doreen. It's no problem. No. Okay, I'll just uh, I'll just uh, read it out then. Doreen saying brands are perhaps a bit like economies because people's needs are set aside and not cared for in favour of protecting the brand or the economy, and that also makes ev every mistake so much more terrible and earth shattering. So um, that's not a take on brand. Mm. Um, uh because it's uh i suppose what dorian is saying is it's a, a cold process it's not mm. a, it's not about humanity it's about as we were saying it's front of house you know as um lois and linda very well said it's front of house it's a a cold front in a way it's less about who we are underneath uh becky morris did you want to talk about what you're saying in the chat um i can yeah i can find it um so often um particularly where where we've been as neurodivergent people it's about telling your story but also making the platform for yourself in terms of what you want to share and what you don't want to share which which is what we've been talking about tonight which is fabulous um but also it's about a lot of people use storytelling within personalized networks within business particularly in terms of where businesses are in how that first of all their people in respect to their own life journey how they can support um equitable practice in how they think and feel but also most importantly about what those changes mean um, to get the very best out of their people, but also most importantly, that people feel able and safe to do so. So it's all about process, but also that whole sort of situation of being able to tell stories um, to be um, and empower other people as well. Um, also, it's there's a couple of really good resources. Um, one's Lessons from the Top by Gavin Eschler, who used to be a journalist about leaders um, in respect to business and politics in what they're how they've constructed their story if you so wish it's really useful material and also there's um harvard business review as well that has um a great one of how to tell a great story like that so sometimes it's about that key situation when they go that's me but also in terms of what you want to tell as well because you know and but sometimes it's about that self-reflection isn't it mm -hmm. that, that yeah. moment where you think i don't know because <clears throat> i must admit i'm not sure myself to be honest on bex but then, <laughs> there's a brand there <laughs> so it got me thinking <laughs> and rose you left the comment but you want to talk about your comment <clears throat> You're on mute, Rose, sorry. I was just thinking a bit more after writing it because 
I, I, I always loved somebody saying once, you don't have to know who you are or what you want to know what you like. And I quite like the idea of a part of one's identity, I suppose, slash brand. I'm not comfortable with the word brand, but um, is what you what you enjoy and what what's meaningful to you and what you your values are mm. um what you care about and how you and what your purpose is i suppose as well um i don't know you could get a real headache thinking about this stuff couldn't you if you thought about it too deeply but um i, I don't want to get a headache anyone i just no no but it's 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 a it's it is a big it is a big question and it is usually where it's used is usually about selling your services somehow it is important it's important to think about um and I kind of cringe at it as well because of the whole every person's story now is central to who they are when selling themselves it feels you know everyone says what's your why what's your why what's your why what's your why if you're running a business and um which is important it's an important thing to think about you know why are you doing mm. what you're doing if you if, if you've even thought about it um yeah but i i the whole um yeah anyway there's a lot there's a lot i could say a lot but i'll shut up oh no thank you so much thank you thank you um so everyone i have the last word as uh, we put into the into the title um it's not so basically so let me talk about maddie and my little brand so it's been such a wonderful evening to find out about yourself and about everyone and for me I, you know, I am a podcast and I have a podcast called Maddie's Chat. So and I like to talk to people about their own story, about what you want to show the world, basically. So it's really I've talked to people with different backgrounds and I feel it's really good to hear to tell your story, how you want to be told. As Becky mentioned, you've got to use your own platform to tell stories. So that's why I have a podcast, because. I had, you know, my identity is different to my brand. When my identity was, I was a young black girl brought up in a little white town in Portsmouth. Do you know what I mean? I was in care and being like at school, getting told you're stupid and thick, you can't read, blah, blah, blah. You know, that's what I thought my identity was. But now I know it's not. You know, I'm proud to be a black, beautiful woman. Do you know what I mean? That is very loud at times, but can be serious when need to be. And has my values are I love everyone and I'm very open minded and that's the most important thing. And if you put that with my brand, my brand is basically sort of the same. Be open, be kind and treat people as you want to be treated. And that's what it's all about at the end. So my closing word is thank you so much for your time. Keep being you, everyone. Love being yourself. Don't let anyone tell you to be anybody else. And thank you very much for listening to my talk this evening. Thank you. Thanks, Maddie. Oh, well thank done, Maddie. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, thank you ever so much. Maddie. Really, really enjoyed it. Have, has anybody got any questions for Maddie? Um, oh, yes. You can find my podcast on Spotify and on Apple um apple um podcast as well and it is the title maddie's chat show and it's got that and a, um a coconut um pineapple as the logo as well on there now guys if you feel brave enough to come onto my podcast and let's have a go you know and have an interview with me it's not that scary don't worry we do a pre-talk if you want to give it a go just drop me a link just send me an email <laughs> Me are you, that in the there your podcast link on the chat um, yeah i can do this is this is back to technology again isn't it <laughs> like i'm still learning okay um I, M, did you want to say something uh yeah i just wanted to ask a quick question to maddie i've just i've um it's been a really interesting discussion maddie Mm -hmm. really really got me thinking really thought, thought provoking towards the end I was thinking a little bit about creativity mm -hmm. and character 
mm-hmm. and like I wondered if you had any sort of thoughts about character and creativity like so for example sometimes not sometimes if I write write a performance poem mm-hmm. and I get on stage as a character mm-hmm. like really opens up my opportunity to be able to do stuff with that that mm-hmm. else might not be able to do yeah definitely yeah exactly if you had any more thoughts on like identity yeah. character creativity Definitely. I think we do have different characters. I have a different character on my podcast and a different character when I do speaking on stage. You know, I say, I can do this, it's not a problem, but I've had to do a speech in front of like 750 people and they're going, Ugh! and then still got to think I've got to talk. And then for me, I'll go into a character. My character is, is that I look at everyone and think they're all naked and they smile all the way through <laughs> just to talk. And I come up and then after that, you know, and that person is someone that I, I can that's that thing and and um it worked we turn in sometimes we have to be a, become um an actor and come into that role or that time and then you can go back as well mm. so yeah i um i do that a lot sometimes well, how often do you do your podcast buddy um i do it <clears throat> i record so i record regularly but um it's every two weeks i get i send um i put it out on there and stuff i had a bit of a break for a little while um, I just think because of just being unwell, just physically unwell and just working so much, um, trying to fit it all in because I have to edit it and stuff. Because I wanted, and I always want to give it to the person I interview. I give them a chance to listen to it and make sure they're happy too. I said back to my values, you know, the value is that. And then I put it out and things. So it's it's good. It's good. Good feedback and stuff. And it's weird when you listen to yourself on a podcast too, completely different going, is that me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I said, you, you have your hand up. Is that a new question? Yeah, D. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. Hi. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I just wondered if you could say anything more about your brand and, you know, just to give us a bit more of a flavour, how you started developing it or or I don't know, just a bit more, I thought would be. OK, really so, yeah. Um <clears throat> For me, um, I developed my brands because I never saw anyone like me where I lived. Every, and everyone that like different people that I had in my life were very quiet and not very outspoken. And the people were quite, um, I found they were quite um, scared to be them. And then I thought and felt that, and wanted to start and give people power to be able to talk um as themselves because I find that we sometimes people show up and they show up in a way that's like shy or not them people and I think so many people are talented out there and got so much to give and um and we listen too much to I feel social media too much tv stuff how are we supposed to show up Mm -hmm. and I'm like kind of my brand is like show up as you Mm. This is me. I'm showing up as me. This is Maddie showing up. This is mm. how I show up. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I do tone it down. I, you know, I'm not, I'm just, because I'm so excited. I'm like, ah, this is, you know, but this is me. But what I mean is that like show up and be you. This is what I want in my brand and empower men and women and children. Someone put a question about just a minute ago. If I worked, I used to work in children's homes as well many years ago when I was a, kid, when I was a little bit younger. Mm. And um, in children's homes, you're kind of like, uh, of those children you did again there was a two different brands of me because I had to be that person that was authoritative you know I did that and all of that mm-hmm. but the other part of me was the other part of like when the children said oh you don't understand I'll be, and I look at them and go I completely understand mm-hmm. what you're going through do mm-hmm. not tell me I don't know mm-hmm. and told him and a little bit just an, a snippet of my identity was that I have been right where you are yeah. really mm-hmm. And yes, and you can change whatever you want, however you want to change it. But this is your, you know, so so my brand is built up from that of trying to work with people to be themselves and to empower people. And I think this is why I thought the podcast is a way of that people can empower and tell their story their way. Mm-hmm. Because as it once again, like people tell your story anyway. Why can't you, you know, D, I don't know your story, but, you know, I think it's good that you tell your story your way and have a safe platform to do it on. So that's the reason why I built my brand on that. Okay. I hope that made sense. That's You've brilliant. Got... Thank you. Sadia yeah. next. Sadia, yeah. Um, hi, Maddie. Thanks for the amazing talk. Really thought-provoking. I'm just wondering, like, if you just 
if you're just an every, everyday person sort of just living a I guess the best word is mediocre life like what's the benefit of <laughs> developing a personal brand like what's how would you gain from that how would that add value to your life like do you become a bit of a magnet um, yeah because you, um um let me think of it correctly pardon me um so i work in retail as well and i meet the everyday people do you know what i mean and but then i meet people um but i sp i've spoken there's so many amazing people i speak to as well every day and sometimes it is that that they're never listened to, do you know what I mean? Their personal brands are not being listened to or anything. And I think it's important to build that you're able to be yourself and able to communicate. And I think that's part of the brand as well, that sometimes that we're told not to communicate and help them communicate. And, and I think it's important, just, it's not about, let's take away the brand away, it's identifying who you are, that's what's the important part of it, do you know what I mean? It's not about brand, it's about just being you. And I think that's the bit what we're missing. And, and that's what I believe in when I talk about brand. Thank Becky's you. nodding. <laughs> it's just like a lot of nods. I hope that made sense. That, Tanya. Thank you. Linda? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I just want to say, Maddie, I mean, it's really a fascinating talk. And I do feel, I mean, the, the kind of work I'm doing at the moment now, I'm working with a lot of um, foster carers. Um, there's a lot of work going into getting quality uh, foster carers from Black and Asian um, community. Mm. Um, and Always is. Always hard to get models. hold of those people to work yeah. in for, be foster mums talked about role model and I, I just wondered about your podcast and whether there is there's room there to use those podcasts to actually reach out and to say you know that th there's work to be done here and it, it, it in this this could happen um and you know also talking to um individuals about accepting difference and and i, I don't know how how do you use your podcast to affect change i suppose is the question that i'm asking if that makes sense and yeah. i think barriers of change off the top of my head really because then the world the entire world would be helpful but um <laughs> you know what i mean but yeah um yeah i mean do you, do you view your podcast as something that is an agent for change definitely i do um on my podcast, as different as I said, different kind of characters of people on there. There's a crucial. There's always a bit on the end. There's a crucial question that I always give my guests. It's very mad. It's like I ask every guest to put down if you've got a quote or a tip or advice that Maddie can put in her, in her handbag of life that she can pass on to the next person. Yeah, yeah. I, I used to use the handbag a lot. Well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So that's how you see it. That, that it's it's about using the podcast to to get people to think about how they might view their own existence, how their sense of self mm -hmm. is developed and changed. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's what you're using them for. That sounds really really interesting. Um, and uh, I mean, you know, there's there's so much going wrong in the world, but there's also an awful lot going right. Mm -hmm. And it's about highlighting some of that as well. Yes, that's that's it as well. Yeah. You know, definitely. Oh, oh, it's fascinating. Thank you very much. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. It's been a, it's like it's been great. Well, Dave's got a hand up again. <laughs> I love it. Last one, Dave. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help myself. <laughs> um, thank you. I forgot to say thank you very much for the talk and everything, Maddie. It's, it's You're so been, welcome. Yeah, it's great. And and, and thank you, because I don't remember there being a Black History Month talk and a theme to um, next step sessions before. Is it next step or are we doing the dyslexia? meter mm -hmm. I can't, anyway to <laughs> to what's done in this in this space um so thank you Catherine it's brilliant for that for having that um it's a, it's a good move isn't it Dave? yeah definitely definitely <laughs> um so this is kind of I don't know how you feel about this Maddie but this is kind of connected to that um mm -hmm. my my folks are from Sierra were from Sierra Leone and I remember 
hearing the name Kamara come up quite a bit. You don't have to answer if you don't want to, but I was just wondering if you had links to Sierra Leone. Do you I do. Know? Both my parents are from Sierra Leone. Oh, they are. Okay, <laughs> yeah. yes. So there you they're go. Both were, yeah. I was from right. free. Okay. From Freetown, they were both from there. So yes, it's a very popular surname. I'm just not related to the footballer, but that's the only problem. Oh, you know, I Chris come. I, if I was, I'd be. <laughs> you might be if you dig deeper. Yeah, 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 true, yeah, true, true, true. Get your genes done. <laughs> Have you done a spit test? Oh. Get him to do a spit test. And do your own. You might well be. Uh, a lot of Sierra Leoneans are related to each other, so you do. It's true. You never know, isn't it? But, yeah, it's very true. Oh, yeah. I, will, I will look into that. Mm. That's something to look into. <laughs> I just well, thought actually, I'd ask. We've got one last question from Thank Joyce. You. The last one is from Joyce. <laughs> Joyce, did you want to ask or make an observation, make a comment, ask a question? You got your hand up. Forgotten how to do this. Yeah, I can't get back to my question. <laughs> um, I think it was about um, it was a great speech, it was really great and informative, and I loved it. And I was just gonna ask, like, reflecting back on where you grew up and how you grew up compared to yourself now, would you say that your brand has changed? And if so, how? Uh Mm. Please don't ask me to repeat because I can't. No, no, <laughs> no, no. I've got the question. I'm it's it's a it's a thought one for me. <laughs> Just making me think. Oh, um I think I'm always changing it all the time, if I'm honest. Yes, it's always changing. Um and it changes with um I think yeah at the moment I'm changing because I got oh, I'm older now so I'm a bit more wiser a little bit so it has changed from when I was a much younger you know in the world and I'm uh and I'm less angry than I was as well. <laughs> no, I'm getting older, so my brand has definitely changed yeah do you mind if I make an observation Maddie it just because we've had such a full and rich uh debate about mm. what do we mean by identity and what do we mean by brand and it seems to me from the conversations we've had tonight that it's about perception mm. uh, because you're talking about your brand changing all the time. Uh, and we have actually, I think there's a sort of a fairly general collective uh, agreement that brands are a bit more constructed. Mm. And, you know, and I quite like that statement front of house as well. But it does seem from our conversation um, that you know, it is about how we perceive what we mean by identity, what we mean by brand, mm. and it's particular to each person, really. Mm -hmm. Would you say that's correct? Yeah, I do definitely. Unless, unless you're an advertising agency, in which case everything, <laughs> everyone, everything that breathes is a brand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, well, um, do you want to have the very last word, Maddie? Oh, oh, oh uh, thank you, everyone. I love you all. I respect you all. And if you want to come on the podcast, you know I am. Don't be scared. And thank you much for your time. Well done, Maddie. Thank you, Maddie. <laughs> thank you, Maddie. That was great. Uh, thank you. Great, great start to the two um, talks for Black History Month um, hosted by the WFGA. So mm. thank you for kicking it off so well. Thank you. Um, <laughs> And on the 26th of October, we've got Marcia talking about her vision to authorship. Okay. Fantastic. She's going to be doing a bit of a route map about how people would go about being an author to publication. So that's going to be fascinating. And on the 16th of November, we've got our very own Linda Pett, who is with us here tonight. Talking about reliance, is that correct? Reliance and uh, resilience in the workplace? Sorry, I was just putting the date in my diary, the 26th, as I realised it wasn't there. Right. Um, I mean, it fits in very nicely with, with what um, we've been talking about today, I think, which is that it's about reflecting and it's about resilience, building resilience, but it's also about resistance. So we're resisting the tide of the pressures. I'm going to focus very much on um, the brand, the front of house, uh, rather than the, the, the identity and, and the personal, because it's about what resisting within work um, and how 
you know we can talk about things in we having a strategy really for negotiating it and that's actually around learning it's around the learning um experience that we have and developing action plans to bring about change so hopefully it'll all make sense but it's building on everything that we've learned over the last year i hope um and i hope they all make sense to people but that's, that's, good. that's what i'm planning on doing mm. Okay. Is that okay? Brilliant. Yes, brilliant. <laughs> October and the 16th of November. I'm going to stop the recording now, if that's okay.